Hello, this is uh, Ruth Sola from PowerBI.com. Um, this week uh, I'm going to show you the dashboard on how to monitor your website site speed uh, with Power BI and Google Analytics. Let's jump on it. So here is how the dashboard looks like. And I think site speed is a difficult thing to monitor because it has a lot of technical terms. And it takes a little bit of time to get to know where they are, especially if you are not like a web developer or something like that. So we have in our site, in our dictionary, when you select the site speed, we have all the terms explained. And I'm going to show you page load time because it just shows you how Google Analytics measures page load time. And we scroll down a little bit and you see here I like this view because it represents what is actually being measured. So for example you see here um, the user clicked on a page link and then you have the page load time that Google Analytics will measure and when all these things have happened then the page loaded completely in the browser and you get a number. So Google Analytics measures network time, server time, and browser time. And in network time you have redirection time, domain lookup time, server connection time, and so on and so forth. So if, if you go and look, for example, I have one open here, the document interactive time, which is, I think is an awesome metric. It would tell you that it measures how long it takes the browser to parse through the document. So it's just such a complex terminology. But what it's really telling you is that from when the user clicks on the page link until it actually starts interacting with it, this is what these metrics, with this exact metric, the document interactive time is measuring. And this, I think, is more important than actually page load time. There are different schools with that, but I think that if the user finds your content useful and they can start interacting with your site fairly quickly, even if this page hasn't loaded completely, it doesn't really matter what they really want is to start reading on what they are reading, the page is loading on the button, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to obsess about page load time. But I don't know, everybody does it in a different way. Um, anyhow, here are all the metrics you have in our Google Analytics Dictionary. All the metrics explain both with the ter technical definition and the, what I call non-technical definition, so hopefully it will help you understand. Now, now that we know that, if we go back to our dashboard, Let's look at the most important one, the one in red. And this has two metrics. Metric number one is the page load time, and metric number two is the document and traffic time. So if we go back, page load time is entire timeline, and document interactive time is just until the user can start interacting. So you can see both. So you see, for example, here that it has a page load time of 6.9 and a document interactive time of 5.3. It's a two seconds different, almost. So, I mean, five seconds is quite a long time. It's not very good, but if you go here, for example, three seconds, I'm happy with this, no problem. Even if it's like five seconds until you load completely. You see that the site is not doing that well. We're already implementing some changes to take the speed down. This is absolutely horrible. But here's a, an easy way to see. You see the trend, and you see if something happened, and then it went up, and then something happened more, and then it went up again, and then it's just continuing going up. So this has to be corrected. Now you would see median instead of average. Google Analytics uses average everywhere, but there are a lot of outliers. You will get this also. Um, out, 
supplier is an average, I'm not a very good combination, if you want to know why, I will put a link down below, but I've written a blog post on it, where I call the Bill Gates effect. So uh, if you really want to understand why it's median and not average, here is a written explain in detail. But otherwise, we, I can tell you that the medium does not take into account the outliers, you know, these extreme values. So you will get a more accurate measurement. What you will be able to see also here is that grouped by buckets of time. So from 2 to 1 second, to 1 to 3 seconds, 3 to 7 seconds. And this is for the entire, I mean, for all the sites, all the dates and browsers. And it's not filtered by anything, it's just as is. And this is the most of the time, it's between 3 to 7 seconds and 7 to 13 seconds. You can also see the big defenders, as I call them, is the, the places where the page load time is absolutely ridiculous and how many times it's been measured. This is in Africa, it's 171 seconds. It might be normal and then only measure once. And then this is uh, just to get an understanding that. Location is a big factor in site speed. So, for example, this is uh, exactly the same graph as this one, but this is not filtered by continent, and it's filtered by the, the, the Americas continent. And you can see that 3 to 7, most of the time, the page loads that fast. But here it's exactly the same, but filtered by Africa, and you can see that most of the time the sites load in 3, 7 or 15 seconds, which is probably good in Africa, so you shouldn't obsess about it. Different locations, different infrastructures will have different pitch of time, and that's fun, that's totally fun. So if we go back here, here we we'll see the page load time, here we see the redirection time, the domain lookup time, Server connection time and server response time. If you want to know exactly what that is, if you don't know, remember you can come to our Google Analytics dictionary and we have everything explained. Here we have the load time by browser and how many features were sampled. This is important because, for example, if we go here, Nokia browser, we had a page load time of 28 seconds, but only one page, for example. Maybe you shouldn't go around to improve that. So it's important to see how many pages were used to actually measure that speed. And then here you have page by location. Uh, in this case, it's a continent, but you can drill down if you like to see. You see Togo is absolutely horrible. And then you have the page load by device, so desktop, mobile, and tablet. And the beauty of this is that you can now interact with it and see, okay, now this is going in the US and everything will filter out. So you will see how browser, browsers are doing, how the different metrics are doing. You see, we went from 8 to 6. Still not very good, but better. You can go to Africa and see what's going on. Okay, Ooh, we have like 15, 26 seconds. You can see, okay, how are my mobile doing? And then you can see here something or what happened. There's some spikes there too. And then you have tablets, so not doing so good at all. Not at all. No desktop. Also doing something horrible. There's some work to do here. So, with these uh, dashboards, you will be able to monitor your site's speed in various. You can just look at it and see if they have trouble or not. Just, I forgot to say, this is the medium page load time, and this is the Google Analytics page load time. This is the page load time you would see if you go into Google Analytics. Okay, this is the average. And then this is the number of pages sampled. 
So, with that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can either build this dashboard, if you go to the Power BI community uh, blog post, there's a link down below. Or you can download the dashboard, and for that you will go to our site. And you need to be a member, but it's absolutely free, and you can download the dashboard. So if you have any questions and comments, let me know. Um, have a nice evening. Bye!